Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the Newfoundland Outsider. Today we're doing a DIY about building a folding camping stove for the hot tent. Um, this stove here is a stainless stove that I built a few years back. And a lot of people want to know where I got the stove uh, online or wherever, but I actually just made it here in the shop. So today we're going to make a stove just like this. This is a folding stove. Um, you may have seen in my one of my videos in the past. Um, it was in the part rejunting video. Here's my little folding stove. It doesn't take much effort to build one. I'll show you how to do it today. Okay. These are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a grinder with a cutting disc, um, a couple pair of vice grips, a steel ruler or some kind of measuring device, tape. You also need a couple pieces of steel so you could clamp your, uh, your stove tin in so that you can make 90 degree angles. A marker, a pair of tin snips, you need a hammer, a pot rivet gun, and of course you need some rivets. What I have done here is I laid out all the materials we're going to need for this uh, this project. Um, this is roofing tin that you can get from your local uh, furnace man or or the tin man. I had them cut all my pieces. I gave them the measurements and I had all the pieces cut. Well I got some stainless steel rivets and these are metal strips and metal angle irons and I bought a stainless steel hinge from Canadian Tire. First thing we're going to do is mark off a quarter inch or 6.3 millimeter all around. We're going to fold that over. All your plates got to be done like that. All sides and all plates have to be folded. And that folding creates um, a bit of rigidity for your stove. Otherwise it would just be too flimsy. edge folded over. Try and hammer on the same side as the fold so that'll be on the inside of your stove and then when you turn it over it's really nice and neat. And to do that with all the edges with all the all the plates. Next thing we got to do is put a 90 degree angle on the edge. So we have to move in three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters Okay, that's one 90 degree. So on the end plates you need 90 degree on each side but not the other two sides. And on the top and bottom you need 90 degree on all four sides. What I've got done so far is I got my two side panels. They're crimped all around. But you don't need to put 90 degree on these. So that's two side panels ready to go. Your door should be crimped all around, but no 90 degree needs to be on that either. Now the end panels. I got my end panels done. It's crimped all around, and you need a 90 degree on both ends, but not the side. So these are done. Okay, I'm working on the top and bottom. So the top and bottom are going to need 90 degrees on all four sides. So, so far I got top and bottom 90 degrees on just two sides. Now I got to do the end part. And I'll show you how to do that now. Let's take the uh, bottom part for example. It needs 90 degrees on all four sides. I got two done. But in order to make a 90 degree on the end, 
you have to put a little slit in here in the corner so that it can fold up and this piece here can fold in and that's why you need your tin snips so at this point take your tin snips and just cut the corner into the three quarter or 19 millimeter mark so that it's like that so you got a little cut in it and you do that on both sides and then you could fold it up so I got myself a little smaller piece of metal to fit inside When you get the corner folded up and you get your little tabs folded in, it should look something like this. At this point you should have your bottom done on four sides, top done on four sides, your end plates should be done on two sides, and your two sides and your door just need to be crimped. First thing we do is we have to put rivets in the corners to hold these from being flexible. We need a pot rivet that'll hold that hinge for us. I guess I forgot to mention in the uh, tools category that we need a drill and a 1-8 drill bit to go with our 1-8 pot rivets. For the next step, we gotta mock up our door over the end panel. So we want it a quarter inch smaller than this all around. So we'll just move inside a quarter inch. Now that we got our, our hinge attached to our little door, we need to attach it to our end plate. So one thing to remember, if you're drilling stainless, it's a lot harder than drilling regular mild steel. And you often got to have a block of wood behind it for support. Now we need a latch to hold it in place. Now for our latch system, I'm just going to use a piece of scrap metal and I'm going to bend it at a 90. I'll make a, a handle of the same material come down and, and close it. Just like this guy right here. Just a simple bent piece of metal with a notch cut in it. And then when I close it, I'll just lay it down in the notch. And then we'll open and close it with just, just a little key, key ring. Because that key ring tends not to get hot as quick as the rest of the stove. Our little latch cut out. We get a second piece of our latch made. Just a piece of scrap metal. I bent it. I put a hole for a pivoting point. I put another hole and put a key ring through it. So when you open the door, it's not hot on your fingers. But this time, when you put your rivet in, don't squeeze it so tight that it breaks off the rivet. Just squeeze it tight enough. Gotta make that bit bigger. Just squeeze the rivet enough to hold it in place.
All we do is make it swell up on the back just a little bit so that it can pivot and that way you wouldn't need a bolt in there. And all you do is just snip off the excess. So on this one I got uh, two notches, one on the inside for totally closed and one on the outside for a little draft. So that's the door and the end plate done. Now we can install the end plates to the bottom. The next step we're going to do is attach the uh, end plates to the bottom. And to do that we're going to uh, find a happy medium here where it stands up nice like that and also folds down like that. So we're going to drill in through here and then we're going to put our rivets in through like that. So when you put your pop rivets in through we want this to be able to flex so don't tighten the rivet all the way just a little bit and we'll snip the end off the rivet. is to mark out our piano hinge and attach it to the side walls. Okay, so we're definitely getting there. We get the end done. On our sides. So next we got to form some latches. Now on my old stove I had uh, you saw I had little hooks to go in there right here to hold them together. Um, this time I'm going to try little locking tabs because the hooks doesn't work very good when your fingers are froze during the winter months. Okay the next step is we're going to make little locking tabs that look kind of like this. I made one. And I'll show you how to make them now. So what you want to do is uh, measure them off. And we're going to need eight of them. So we're going to cut off these eight. And then we're going to bend the, bend the corners up like this. Just a little bit. Not quite halfway. Something like that. And then we're going to drill a hole in them. So we can pivot on them. But before you cut them off... Draw all the holes now because it's going to be hard to it's going to be hard to hold the little tiny piece like that and drill the hole. Okay, the next thing we got to do is make the make the hole for the chimney.
I'm using a uh, three inch galvanized pipe that is tapered down to two and three quarters. So I use a two and a three quarter hole saw. And that's perfect. The next step we're going to do in our stove build is the legs. And our legs are going to be, I'll just show you what they're going to be like. We want to make your legs like that so they can fold down into the body. Okay, the first thing we want to do with the legs is we want to, let me get my pencil here. We want to notch out this piece of all the legs. So I've already got them marked. So I just want you to notch them all out. So you need two on that side and you need two on the opposite side for the opposite side of the stove. So next we're going to put our legs on. Good morning. I guess you thought you were going to get away without having uh, a mug up and a cup of tea here in Newfoundland. No. So yesterday we finished building the uh, stove and this morning I got up and I'm going to show you. This is the one we built yesterday and this is my old one I built a couple years ago. I just want to show you the difference. Um, you can use this one with the lid on it like this in your camp or whatever but in some places they need to have their fire in a contained in a contained box or a fire pit so you can take the top off use your grate and use them outside
watching. I hope your stove project works out well for you. I'll leave a description and a link below of uh, the tools you need and the dimensions of the stove I made yesterday. Um, good luck with your project. I'll see you next time. Thank you.